スーパーフライ絶好のおそらくはこれ長谷川さん最高の試合ができてますよねまあいい試合できてると僕は思いますねはいシードストレートフリーズも手を返していくさすがのタフネスですただ田中は自分のボクシングやりきりましたここまで残り30秒ダイチャンピオン。
you know, Junta Nakatani has to be top five pound for pound. You know, you got Inoue, you got Ioka, you got Kosai Tanaka, who we're going to talk about later on in this video. You got um, a lot of great talents, but he's definitely he's definitely up there with 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 with, with, with some of the best fighters they got. So, um, love what I saw from him. I think um, I think what's working out very well for Junta Nakatani is the fact that you know, much like Tanaka. He's been getting a lot of sparring in America, particularly in Southern California. So he's been fighting a lot of tough Mexican fighters, you know, guys with pressure styles that come to take your head off. And that, that could only harden you as a fighter. You know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's different than the sparring he would get in Japan, which is also great sparring, but it's, it's, just, it's just different, you know. So, um, you know, congrats to him. And I, and, and I really do hope that uh, he continues to win and, 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 and become the fighter that we all know he can be. So shout out to, shout out to Junta Nakatani. But... Switching gears, switching gears. We're going to Kosai Tanaka because he had the fight that was less talked about out there in Nagoya, Japan. Now, um, I had a front row seat when I was in Japan, when I went to the Hatsunaka Boxing Gym to watch Kosai Tanaka train. And I, I came out here and I made the video, video and I told you guys, I said, Kosai Tanaka is one of the best fighters I've ever seen in the boxing gym. And I've seen many great fighters in the boxing gym. Speed, power, everything you could ask for. And, it, and the thing is too, his defense is improving, and you know he he was taking on a fighter in this fight in the Colombian Pablo Carrillo, um, and Carrillo didn't have a great like he didn't have a great record. Like Carrillo was twenty eight and eight coming into the fight, uh, had lost a, a, a slew of fights. But when you look, when you look at the, the the durability he has, he's only been stopped once ever coming into this fight, and that was uh, many years ago when uh, he got stopped by former light light flyweight champion Francisco Rodriguez Jr., who we, who we all know if you know if you know the lower weight classes. Francisco Rodriguez Jr. is one of the hardest punching fighters in and around those weights. I mean, Roman Gonz he gave prime Charlo Tito Gonzalez one of his hardest fights. So no shame in that. But I mean, he's also fought top fighters, other top guys, you know, in these weight classes. He fought um, Kazuto Ioka back in 2014, went the distance with him. Uh, fought Donnie Nietes, went the distance with him. Uh, fought Dwayne Beeman, who you guys may remember, fought a guy I was shot up. Went the distance with him. So this is a guy that's not easy to... to um, to stop right and he was he was very brave he fought a very courageous fight against tanaka he was he was in his chest the whole fight from the clips i could see and whatnot because you know i couldn't get the fight because it was like to get this fight guys by, by the way i tried to watch this fight it was on this random like japanese streaming service it was like a thousand yen which is like seven dollars and 25 cents us money and basically it was it was just very difficult so i just I, you know i didn't watch it but um you know i did see the highlights when it came out on twitter and stuff and um you know, Kosai looked like what I saw in the gym. He looked like a fighter who was defensively sound. He looked like a fighter that's just improving that part of his of his of his skills. Cause Gadiel couldn't really hit him too um, too many times, but he was he was game. And um, that's his fourth win in a row since he lost to to, to, to Kazuto Ioka back in 2020. And every fight he's had since the Ioka fight, you've seen that focus on the on the defensive side of boxing, and he's improved. And um. You know, I, I I definitely think that Kosa Tanaka still has a chance when it's all said and done to go down as you know one of, if not the best pound pound fighters active in Japan. You know, he's he's that damn good. Now, as it stands right now, switching gears, right, switching gears. As it's kind of wanted to tie these two guys up in um in the same video because, you know, as it stands now, before that fight happened in the in the, in the WBO rankings, all right, in the WBO um, super flyweight rankings. Uh, Nakatani, I believe, was one. He was number one in the rankings. And I'm going to pull it up right now while I'm talking to you guys. But he was number one. Uh, Maloney was two. And uh, Kosai was three. So let me, let, me, let me make sure I got my facts right because I, I, got, I got it right in front of me. Just give me like one second, guys. So as it stands, like, I got it right here. So 126, 118. Here we go, 115. So uh, 115. So Nakatani was one coming into the fight. He was the number one contender. He just won, right? Maloney was two. He just got knocked out. And then Kosai Tanaka was three. Now, what could happen next, I think, for Kosai is very intriguing because I feel like he's won enough fights since the Ioka fight to be in position to fight for a world title. He could fight, you know, Junta Nakatani, which let's, let's, let, let's start there. Nakatani versus Kosai Tanaka, I feel like is one of the best fights, not just in Japan, but in, in boxing. It's, it's definitely, I would say one of the most offensively dynamic matchups in boxing because you got one guy who's a tall southpaw but his defense makes him a little bit vulnerable but he's got a certain meanness to him to where like you can't you can't abandon your responsibility defensively for too long because you'll get clipped and you'll get hit with a shot you see what i'm saying and tanaka he's a fighter that has extreme quickness very sharp fighter um defensively improving 
and he's already shown himself to be one of the best pound for pound fighters in boxing and in Japan. He's literally, if he would have beat Ioka, he would have been discussed as the best pound for pound fighter in Japan if he would have won that fight. He would have had a legitimate argument to that, but he didn't, so that's why we're not talking about him like that. But that fight right there, I think, is a fight that should be looked into. Uh, right now, as it stands, uh, Kosai Tanaka does not, I don't think he has any co promotional deal with any major television promoter or US in the, uh, or network or television promoter in the US. So I feel like maybe he should get that sorted out. Maybe Top Rank will want to uh, sign up, sign him or the zone or, or, or whoever. But I think I would like to see that part of his career get sorted out so that pe more people in America know who he is and see him at least once or twice on a card. Um, I know that Kosai did express to me when I interviewed him that the guy he's interested in fighting in this weight class. Um, is the IBF champion, Fernando Puma Martinez. And I think, I think that'd be a great fight because if he can get on U.S. television, fight, you know, a fun, entertaining, uh, all-action fight like Martinez and beat him, then I think that will go a much longer way in his career. And then, and then all of a sudden you're talking about Nakatani versus Tanaka being a potential unification fight. And that makes it better. That, that would make, that this would be like one of the matches for me that I feel like would would really set the tone for the next era of super flyweight boxing because the old guard is gone, you guys. The old guard is gone. Roman Gonzalez is getting old. Ron Vasai is getting old. Quadras is getting old. You know, Guy Estrada is getting old as well. So we have to look to the future. And I feel like these are two of the names in this weight class that we should be looking to. So you have that option. And that's a hell of an option because, you know, we've seen Kosa Tanaka. He's willing to fight the best. He fought Kazuto Ioka, in, you know, one of the biggest fights in Japan. You know, he's fought Jonathan Gonzalez, who's wanted to become champion. He's fought a whole bunch of, of top fighters. Sho Kimura, who's another, you know, top fighter. You know, a good fighter in this weight class. So he, he his resume is solidified. He's one of the best guys in these lower weight classes. Um, Junto, I feel like as good as he's been, I just think that the guys have been fighting, while they are good fighters like Maloney and, 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 and Angela Costa, these guys aren't the kind of fighters I feel offensively have enough in their toolbox to give him the kind of trouble he needs. Now, Tanaka, different story. You know, smaller guy, yes, but def definitely has the quickness, the speed, the sharpness of punches to give him some problems. So that's one option I feel is there for them. Now, the other option, and this is a bit of a long shot, but I'm going to throw it out there because when you look at the rankings in the title picture right now, as it stands at this moment in time, on this May 21st, 1154 a.m. p. Uh, 1154 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here in sunny South Florida, as it stands right now, Kosa Tanaka is number three in the WBO rankings. Just below him at number four is the guy that we call on this channel the real TBE, the Picasso of boxing, Roman Conchalatillo Gonzalez. He's number four. Roman Gonzalez is also number five in the IBF. Kosa Tanaka is number three in the IBF. So what I'm saying is this. It's a bit of a long shot, but I feel like if Kosa Tanaka is looking to become a bigger name in America, as much as I probably wouldn't want to see it just because I'm such a big Chocolatito fan, that could be a fight that's explored because... um. You know, Roman Gonzalez hasn't retired yet, and he's still, I think, interested in challenging himself while he's still here in boxing. So if he's going to be doing that, I feel like this would be the prime fight for Tanaka. You know, you got an aging fighter who we, who we can tell we, based on his last fight on the slow start he had against Gallo. You know, he looked really slow against Gallo, and he started off very slow against Gallo. And it wasn't the Roman Gonzalez from the Gallo rematch. It wasn't the Roman Gonzalez from the Cali five fight. You know, he he's definitely, it's about that time to think about hanging it up. But if he's going to keep fighting... Right there is Tanaka in the rankings, and I feel like that's the fight for him. If he can go on there and just, like, let's say he's dominate Roman Gonzalez, then that, that puts a lot of people on notice in the States as to who he is. And then um, that, that I actually think, uh, that along with maybe fighting Fernando Martinez after for a title. If he, can, if he can get those two fights, and in that order, I'll say this. If he can beat Chocolatito, get that win, fight Fernando Martinez, pick up the IBF title. If he can, if he can get those two fights in that order... I think Junta Nakatani and Kosa Tanaka becomes one of the biggest fights in the lower weight classes. And I think it actually becomes a fight here in the States and, as, of course, Japan that would be of much interest to a lot of people. So I want to see this fight. It's the one I'm calling for, but I understand boxing is business and, and there's a process to these things. So I hope the process happens and um, we can get to um, what we want to see in the sport. But uh, shout out to Nakatani on a great knockout. He's one of the best offensive fighters in boxing. Shout out to Kota Hatanaka on his fourth win in a row since the devastating knockout loss to uh, Kazuto Ioka back in um, 2020. And, and of course, uh, and I'll, I'll end it on this. And of course, you still have the Kazuto Ioka rematch, which I know Tanaka wants. So he can always avenge that loss because as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, Ioka still is one of the top fighters around these weights. Um, and people want to see him fight 
you know, top guys. So why not, why not fight uh, Tanaka? But um, yeah, that's the news. Long with a video, but for good reason. It's a fight. This is something I'm very excited about. So shout out to both of the Jap Japan's best pound pound talents on uh, two great performances and two and two stop out, stoppage victories. Uh, you know, earlier today. So uh, yeah, leave your comments down below. What do you guys think about uh, Kosei Tanaka versus Junto Nakatani? And maybe some of the fights that I mentioned, like Kosei Tanaka versus, you know, Romo Gonzalez, Kosei Tanaka versus Fernando Martinez, Kosei Tanaka versus, you know, Ioka rematch. Or even, or what about even like a Junto Nakatani versus, I don't know, maybe he fights Romo Gonzalez because Romo Gonzalez is in the ranking. So there's, there's, there's options. There's a lot of, I feel like Super Flyweight is, is moving in a new direction, but yet a, a good direction. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see how it goes. But, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And it feels so good to say this because I ain't said this in this room in a long time. But you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, I'll tell you guys. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hatanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, for more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.